So Group A is really there for the taking. Yeah, super open-ended, right? A team like Rush B would love to open up with a, uh, a win as well here, especially against another one another one of the favorites to get through the group in, in terms of Saw. But here we go into Nuke, the decider of the series. Let's get into it. Let's go. We already have the knife round, I believe, completed. And uh, we'll be Rush B to start on CT side. Story has got the utility alongside Jerks and Arrows Doshe. And I believe that nade, obviously, will be the common HE to break open Squeaky. There it goes. Smoke for main. And if they want to, they can either dive down the vent or go to A. Yeah, execute gaining some traction right now as they charge their way forward. Utility reigning in. Nobody to meet them on the opposite side. Oh. Quite an attached setup coming through from the CT side. But... A lot of missed shots as well. Executor has no idea where Story is. Death from above. And I don't even know if Saw know what they're doing right now. But eventually they'll settle on the B-bomb side. Yeah, it seems a bit of a, a betwixt in between feeling this round for Saw. Just trying to find where they get the picks first. And yeah, the fact that Nota didn't manage to connect a bullet as they dove down the vents is going to be a bit rough. But hang on a second. It's still only a 3v4. There's a glimmer of hope. No two will leap his way down. Jerk seems to be careful not to give his life up for free because Texie's de dealt with Roman. Good timing on this peak from Jerk, but he's out of bullets. Oh, the second to last just manages to get another head, and that's actually a pretty cru crucial shot to hit. There is no time for Texie. He's going to have to fall away. Story has won it by staying alive. Saw so take the all-important beginning to this game of Nuke, and they'll both go down to the bomb. So everyone dies in our first round of map three. I feel like it was always going to be a struggle for uh, for Rush B in terms of time there to make that retake happen, just because of how quickly Saw had actually gotten control of that B bomb site and how how much disarray or or um, how difficult it was for Rush B to try and get in a position to make that retake happen. So things are always stacked up against them. Doesn't yep. work out again. They've lost three. Uh, we haven't seen a CT side pistol one yet in the series. Trav five for five on the T side so far. That's actually a very good point. I haven't noticed that. You're good at noticing those things. That's why I've got you here. Have. <laughs> well, hey, um, I contribute something. <laughs> Don't do yourself a disservice. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool that Saw were able to get away with that. I think in the end, it was, as you say, pretty much a guarantee. So I don't think Rushby had a kit on any of those three, three retaking players either. So what can you do? Yeah, not as much initiative being taken here by Rush B compared to what we've seen in these sort of half by rounds gone by. And they've looked to try and force the issue a bit more and get into the faces of Saw. This time they're happier to just kind of bide their time. But Saw have circumvented them by going in towards Ramp here. No presence at all from the CT side. Yeah, we're going to be wary of these sort of four spies. Oh. A little bit of a close one there. Last broken open, but now with the smoke up, attacking the smoke is all he can do and jerks. He may get dicked by that P250, but the reaction says no to that. In the end, they actually got all five players up right now before Texi finally shows up. But that is just a consolation for a... A $600 bonus, so we'll take it comfortably, and obviously that will put Rush B onto their pistols again. Yeah, Important to get a good T-side start Saw. as well. They were trying to just figure out there exactly what was going on in terms of the investment out of Rush B. Yeah. Just pack-based mentality, no unnecessary risks taken, nobody left isolated. That was one of the problems when they lost that second round on Vertigo after winning the T-side pistol lost to that exact hot buy. Kind of got caught off guard one by one. Nice nades to open up there, taking down the tension of Kiro. If Kiro doesn't pitch up for Rush B, then they'll be in a lot of problems. Right? They've relied on him heavily throughout the series so far. Kateris getting a couple on the anti-eco. Yeah, Kiro is an important factor. Of course, for some of you guys who may be just arriving, look, coming to watch the final map of a BO3, who might not know much about Rush B. Kinky is the OG IGL 
from the old Dream Eaters Hard Legion days. He's 32 now, is Kinky, and he's trying to lead some youngsters to some more success. Nota and Texi are both 16 years of age, ones to keep an eye on for the future. And I've been very impressed by some plays from Nota in this BO3. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I mean, lit the server up a couple of times. A lot of impactful frags as well coming through from Nota. I've seen some good crosshair placement out of him. Some good decision making. Either way, 3-0. Strong start for, here for Saw on the decider. As we head into this first gun round, Hero has the AWP at his disposal. Rifles outside of that. Let's see if they can get themselves on the board. Kiro has his AWP, which is what we want to see, like you say. Forty-six. Where does he go? Okay, the outside, all the way back from Zai Wu's box. Yeah. Jump throw nade, of course, to break open those smokes, and Materis immediately hesitates when he sees there is no cover for a split second. But they'll still manage to make their way across. Oh, there's going to be a gap there, though. Yujuk's a little bit too close oh, to no. the edge of the, the uh, fence there. And because of that, the long-range angle that Kiro can see from here makes it way too easy for him. And double up as well. Story can't get his quick reaction to deal with Texi. And this is falling apart for Saw with that player in secret, of course, I believe, in Kinky. And one kill back to tight angle for Kiro. Okay, makes it three for him. What did we say about him? He's got a triple already, and he's oh, just wall banged God. through Arrow's Dosh from that heaven into secret. That is dirty stuff. Yeah. Nearly adds a fourth to the sequence. Great work coming through from Kiro, picking and choosing his battles wisely and the angles at which he takes those battles. You jokes was a bit lazy there. You can't afford to walk so far away from the smoke grenades yeah. instead of hugging the fence because that's when you leave yourself exposed. You've got to hug the smoke grenades, if not crouch when you're crossing that threshold to ensure you don't expose yourself to uh, any AWP on top by the air cons there on the catwalk. Either way, yeah. maybe Kiro giving us a taste of what to expect throughout the rest of the half here. Unusual error from Jerks. Usually he knows those angles, but talking about knowing his angles, goodness me, he's down toward mini roof already. He's going to be jumping down toward main if they're not careful. Oh, Thankfully, sure they get the information as quickly as possible. And Nota reacts, which means ramp is the next option. And Riss is a bit disconnected from Saw in these next few rounds. Concerning if you're a Portuguese fan. Yeah, 5v3. They do have some map control, but it looks like Hero's aware of Roman's forward position. Doesn't think he's going to hit the shot, though. But he has got support from Texi. Great defense coming through from Rush B. Unorthodox. Not the fights they would have expected to have to take, especially not with a minute and 10 seconds left on the clock, but yeah, they were in that position. They were able to make it work. Saw won't have any money left after they lose this round, so Rush B start to build their campaign here on the decider. While Nuke has always been a comfortable map for Saw in the history of their, well, basically the entire timeline in Counter-Strike, I feel like it's one they can show some nervy errors on. Remember in past RMRs, it was one they would always go to as a pick. And they'd always struggle on. It's only now uh, they've managed to find a little bit extra to finally qualify for a major. Kinky will remove his counterpart IGL Materis. And as you so rightly say, it's now put sword down to pistols again. They might give an idea of maybe a hero Galil or hero AK that Roman or Materis could perhaps drop that or buy it up themselves. Well, that's a, probably a pause that they're putting in now to decide exactly what their buy will be. And to take a breather too, because the last couple of rounds have been a bit disconnected. A few errors creeping in, even something as simple as that instance of jerks walking too close to the fence. Yeah. And then getting picked apart by Kiro. Not going to have much to work with coming into this next round on the T side. Couple upgraded pistols, some light utility as well. Probably going to see a fast paced play. More often than not, the option employed in this sort of a round. But this is good for Rush B. I mean, they've kept majority of their players alive in the two rounds that they've won now. 
Hero's coming alive in a big way. Signs are looking pretty good right now for the CT side in the early stages. Eight. Rushby are making Soul work hard in this game, Trav. They're making them sweat for this victory if they're going to get there. Taxi, ready toward ramp. In case that rush does come in. There's just pistols. Eagle on Roman with the Kevlar is the only thing that we're going to afford. And Story just accepts what's coming his way. Nice damage from Nota. But he needs to be careful now. There's no reason to go in for more and lose, it, lose that AK. In a very good position with the AK on the CT side. So he's playing with the ladder, trying to be a nuisance. And now Texi will hear the pistols coming his way. Actually gets top two from that. And then a an nade yeah, comes yeah. flying in from Kiro to double Kobe the last two. And we're back even again at three apiece. I like the molly there from Texi because it keeps them at bay, but it still gives you a chance to have a gunfight with them because there's a bit of space and room behind it for the T's to work with. But they can't actually cross, cross into ramp. So nice work there from Texi. You guys can have a gunfight with me, but only from over there, not any closer. Yeah. So your, your pistols negated. Yeah, I mean, like a more inexperienced ramp player might be throwing the molly over the top of the box to try and actually yeah. you know, stop them from entering in, but he realized they were too close and would have just take a few ticks running through it and could maybe overwhelm him, so he throws it in the entrance instead. That's the right thing to do. Look how light saw our on utility already. I'm assuming there might be a couple pieces dumped and spawned there for Arrows Dodger to recover. If not, they've got one piece of each type of util left at their disposal, and there's still a minute 20 on the clock. Yeah, they are thin on full belts, that's for sure. And if you jerks was to go down, then of course that is a massive problem. He's got the main majority of it. Mutuus will get down towards secret and at least show his presence and force that defense away. Kiro is waiting for the, the jump across. That's why his crosshair is positioned so high. Now I'll get this information. That's going to be a good HE. Doesn't do as much damage as I thought, but Kinky Tech Story in the meantime. They're going to just dive up the ladder toward hell. That would be very, very dangerous. Kinky isn't ready for that. And they will just go three up the ladder. Is Executor ready? Now he is. But he's stuck, stuck in a very difficult position. And Arrows Dosh will take him down. Four versus three. Change upon the strategy from Saw. And it's worked out for a bomb plant and a man advantage in the after plant. Yeah, really important round as well, right? The success coming here because it means that they're going to regain the lead and make sure that Rush B don't continue this momentum. And they're just going to fold their fold their cards, fold their hand here at the end of the round. No need to attempt the retake. Not much going for them. Carry the guns through. Not normally the way you end up on the A-bomb site, but it worked out well for them. Yeah, sometimes a strategy like that can be used on a pistol, which makes a little bit more sense when you've got that higher movement with the Glocks. But uh, not this time. That's a bit rough from Texi. Kiro now is under a bit of pressure. Going over the Deagle out instead, and that's not the way to do it. Two will go down to the bomb on Saw, which is not great for their own money, but they have limited rush bees as well. Problem is, is that they already had a bank built up, of course. So I feel like that's more of a problem for Saw than it is for Rush B in that instance. Yeah, you're probably right. And we'll see if that does come back to haunt them. I mean, yeah, sure, Saw win the round, but and they spend a lot of money in the process. Yeah. See what the seventh or I suppose the eighth round has in store for us. We've got a bit of a pause here. Pauses have been resolved quite quickly in the series so far. Yeah, and then have been some points. Yeah, I mentioned as well that you know two going down to the bomb is is unfortunate, but it's more impactful for Saw. Like I said, I mean Roman's only on the Galil now, so not the end of the world, but not something they would have ideally wanted because if Rush B just hit back straight away again. They still have a bank to fall back on, and Saw don't. Both teams are, of course, on 1,900 loss bonus, but HB have three, probably four of their five 
There's more than enough in reserve. Faster play. Looks Ooh. like, yeah, change of pace coming through from Saul right now. Muterus is wearing those bullets though, man. He's taking a lot of damage <laughs> as he emerges out the squeaky door. And gonna go back with his tail between his legs. Next point of contact on top of mouth. Oh man, Kinky, he's looking for this gunfight right now, but looks like u jerks is gonna be able to avoid it for the time being. And he could have the element of surprise on his side now. As that smoke starts to fade, maybe Story can take the bait away. It's a bit awkward now. Once again, Sora kind of spread out in positions where if they do swing a little bit too far, they can just be picked apart one by one. Jerks will drop down. Spotted out by Kinky. Now he realizes there's no really real need to face that. He can just let them have outside and worry about the sights themselves. Jerks toward Garage. I think realizes he's being tapped down by two different angles, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care one jot. He's removed yeah. Texie beautifully. Look how much work he's been able to do there as well. In conjunction with Story, they've taken so much attention towards outside that their teammates have just been able to go down ramp into a vacant B-bomb site. So not only are they getting that opening frag, but they've also created a huge amount of space. Bree takes certainly on the cards here for Rush B. They've got a couple of kits. They've got some utility to work with as well. We can try and find some kills to kick off retake right now. Nobody really able to find a way into the bomb site. Mutra is running out of ammo. Couple of players low on health here, but the time is ticking away, and it looks like they've decided to pull the plug altogether. Oh, I mean, again, damage could be significant here. Multiple saw players could go up to the bomb. Rush B are going to save. I think they might have just found an exit route in time, and they should be all right. Anyway, Materius might be quite close for them, but I think they've backed away to the best corner possible. And yes, it's actually Nota and Kinky that go down to the bomb, which is a surprise. They tried to get away with those guns, and in the end, only get away with two. So just like that, again, now their economy is a bit more limited. They had that one buy in arrears, like I mentioned, but not as good as it would have been. Good take from Saw. Good heads up knowledge of the map and what's open at the right time once they pulled those ramp defenders away, like he said. Mostly down to jerks as well. Yeah, great work coming through. He's really coming alive here on the Decider, which is what they want from their Star Rifler, right? Let's see. Rush B again able to afford a decent investment, but this is where the buck stops, and this is where the gravy train ends. Lose this round 6-3, certainly become 7-3, and Saw on the T side winning 7 out of 10 rounds. They'd be loving life at that point, Trav. Not sure I'd want to be on a gravy train, to be honest. Yeah? I mean, it's a good time. Good time on the gravy train. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Alright, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Ramp taken on round 9 for Saw. Again, they've pushed Rush B away. And when you take ramp, of course, on the T-side of Nuke, you have plenty of options. And you don't really have much information if you're the CT side. Saw could walk back and do an execute on A. They could dive down ramp. They can even go back up hell like they've done once already. Multiple options. I think that's what the problem is for Rush B. Look at how they've had to set themselves up accordingly. Texie's all the way back towards CT spawn and not controlling outside. He's just watching hell at this point. Executor having to push up towards Squeaky. You've got one player who's watching now, and it's actually... Okay, excuse me. Kinky, who's in CT spawn controlling hell, and he's done a great job of it. Maybe the god of the underworld is oh. through from him. No idea what's going on there from Execute. <laughs> he's in midair. Not going to stick the landing. And now it's a 3v3. Yeah, no landings were stuck there, that's for sure. Only a landing into his grave. They're not checking heaven. That's a big oversight from Saw. No, they'd come up the ladder, so maybe they're not expecting someone to be heaven so quickly. But now nine seconds, Nota's just trying to do his best, but Materius is doing so much work. He's tapped down Taxi with a few bullets in the clip, and it leaves it down to uh, the Sweet Rice himself to close it out. Just by the skin of his teeth, Saw have double the score of Rush B, but not without a struggle. Yeah, keyword being struggle, but they do still get across the line and look at what that does to Rush B's economy. They've now got nothing to work with going into the next and Saw will waltz onto that seventh round. Got the ball rolling here, they've got the momentum behind them. I mean, Rush B have started slowly once already in the series and they're able to get that campaign back on track and they're going to have to do it again here. 
I mean, you know for a fact that Thor will have better mental fortitude, more tenacity, you know, better stamina in a series as well than their counterparts, Rush B. Rush B, you know, fought hard on that first map where they narrowly lost out 13-10. It then took a lot of a lot out of them to win 13-11 in the second map. So how much energy do they really have left, Trav? That is the question. And you're right about the snowballing of the scoreline. 7-3 could be imminent, should be imminent. Nice boost up on ramp though, of course. It's going to often work out for a freebie. Especially with that impactful 5-7. I'm not sure that's going to be close enough range from up there to be a one-shot headshot. But the dinks will be painful. Materials is already on B. He's trying to clear it all out. And actually, if he pops his head up from ramp here... You'll probably see that boost up 5-7 pretty quickly. And it'll be even harder for the pistol to get the kill. Oh, do you see a leg? There it is. Oh, he's been digged though. There is that instant dig I mentioned. Ooh. And that activates Kiro with the scout. There's actually more players here than I think Saw would have hoped. Um... But Jerks has absolutely destroyed Kiro. See you next round, son. I mean, this rifling combo of you, Jerks and Aristotle is one of the most deadly in the tier 2 space, right? When they're both on... These guys can absolutely tear up an opponent. And you just saw how quickly those kills came through for them, man. I mean, how fast did you jokes get that trade and then just step out into the scope of the scout? Giving yep. out haircuts for free at this point. He's just trusting his teammates that would trade as well. Because, obviously, he's got many men alongside him in that instance. Kinky trying to save his 5-7. He's got Kevlar, so it's definitely worth the save. Is story a Noah? Has he read the book? Has he read the right story? Again, lots of damage taken to the bomb. It feels like both oh, these man. two teams haven't necessarily understood what's safe and what's not yet with the... I wouldn't even say new bomb radius is but no, there's, there's quite new. a lot of instances where they shouldn't be dying to the bomb i feel like i mean has anybody really figured it out though trav this is the problem man it's, it's <laughs> always like yeah i i feel like i'm safe enough i feel like i'm far away enough and you just you never are uh executors struggling um yeah struggling to execute many people one for six right now listen if you're gonna have the name you've got to live up to it trav true very true Materials will take a tick to the flames. <laughs> Correct. Materials will take a tick to the flames. And as that smoke is broken open, somehow he takes Kinky. I think considering that, that the damage that was done, he'll be delighted the fact he got one kill. Once again, Kiro is trying to look at the top of that smoke, but thankfully for Saw this time, they managed to get down to Secret safely. No two, though, is in the right position. 16 year old, the youngster. Playing it with maturity. Jump spotting the stairs, waiting to see who's crossed. Crossed, but unfortunately, of course, now he's uh, just 18 points of health. Make that 15 is that nade. Blows open the doors and the smoke. Now, Story will try and leap his way through to help out. Glass will be broken toward hell. Of course, that will be heard. But even though it's a 4v4, you feel like Saw have a lot of control here. Oh, man. What's the timing going to be like? Hero's footsteps certainly heard. Story ah. he is in the perfect position to execute Kiro as he rounds the corner. And that puts Saw in a supreme position. That B-bomb site's been completely cleared out. They've got the bomb on site as well. It's an eighth round in the waiting. In fact, Story doesn't want to wait. He's going to write his own ending to this one. Eight to three. Final round of the half coming in. It's at least a four-round lead for Saw. By the way, I've been there's been so much action. I meant to ask you: Is the the call out for Mini Mouth? Is that a South African call out? It is, uh, right? Is is that not? I mean, I I felt like I'm pretty sure I've heard it internationally as well. Yeah, I think I have, but like you know, some are more common in in South Africa. There are a few call outs that you yeah, mentioned to me before that are different think, in South Africa. Yeah, I think Mouth is definitely uh, more common in the part of the world. Executed though. Hold on, you say the pace right now. This is the lobby wow. crunch. Trav, it's your favorite cereal. <laughs> It is my favourite cereal, and unfortunately, maybe Rush B won't find it too tasty. The only thing that is a happy thing 
for Texi. It's the fact that he did have the bomb in front of him. But that deep smoke coming in, Roman is just being an absolute nuisance. And it's just shift through it, shift through it while Texi has reloaded the MP9. So he's escaped, and I don't think Texi will even know the bomb's been taken. He'll know now, I think the tap's come through and the plant will come through. But of course, he didn't even see it get recovered. The smoke in the way. He is more stuck than a stuck thing, is Texi. That is very stuck. Yeah. Under the half is nigh. And without a kit, I think he kind of knows what the answer is. Do you save a 9-7 KD? That might be his idea at this point, because no there's no way you win this round. Thankfully, he's at least running up heaven to give it a look. Try and get some kills at least, but he runs into Roman, and he'll finish off the half four sword. That's more of the sword we've come to expect in this game, and they needed it in this third map decider. We'll see you after a quick break. One more half of Counter-Strike in the first game week of ESL Challenger League Season 47 in EU. And Saw, they've had to fight for it. Rush B have had a pretty good day. And especially games by the name of Kiro. But unfortunately, in the other two maps, it adds up to none of his other teammates being positive other than him. And I think Saw's superior teamwork has shone through on the T side of Nuke. Let's see if they can close it out on CT. The power of friendship, Trav. You're my friend. You anywhere you need to be. I know. And look what we've accomplished. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see what story can do here. Getting quite a bit of information. Will we see a CT side win a pistol run? Finally, it's been five for five from the T side so far. And you know what? We're going to go six for six, baby. Not a single... CT side pistol round has been won in this match so far. That's crazy. 
That really is crazy. The Galaks are too strong. Kiro in garage. Is he hard cleared by Arazoshe? I think he will be. But the PT-50 wins it out nicely. And it couldn't be easier for Rush B. Roman gets swung on by Nota and surfed upon. 9-4. There's a glimmer of hope. Yeah, really important pistol round, obviously, being won there by Rush B. Normally, you've got to get the lion's share of your rounds on the CT side of this map, but uh, it's the inverse on this occasion. Winning the pistol was a must. First step achieved. Texi's been good so far here on Nuke Trav. I mean, you mentioned he's the other 16-year-old in Rush B. Yep. Looked a bit shaky on the two maps preceding us, I would say, but I've liked what I've seen so far here on Nuke. Yeah, it's an incredibly young team. Adds Texi and Nota's ages together, and you get Kinky, which is pretty wild. Yeah. I don't want to say that sentence again, but you get my point. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, it's one of those things, right? Um, Muterus is, what, 31? Same as Roman, I think. I think they're both 31, yeah. Correct. So, not far from... Same stat line. Dodging a bullet there, lads. So we don't inc include you in that one. Yeah, <laughs> true. They've gone for the full force here, have Saw. Yeah, and already the... Upgraded story. Famas is already down to 15 HP, sadly. Deep control toward outside. And, of course, that Famas now is all the way back toward the forklift oh, in spawn. Can he somehow this tap away? Sucks, yeah, this is such a I've hard angle. With this. Because <laughs> even if he dies, you can't recover the rifle. I mean, how much can he really get done? It's not like you're going to get an instant kill with the FAMAS. He's okay. just not a comp. Okay, oh, that's good, though. One. That's the bomb. Bit of info. Oh, okay, but you jerks. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about it. I agree with you. Of course, Kira is actually checking for it, too. Now they spotted him out. They're just going to try an HE him. That's a long-range oh, jump lad. HE. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 8HB. In comes another. Doesn't reach. <laughs> They're very no insistent ways, on trying guys. to take him down now. And now the bomb's kill. on the floor. What is going on? Why are they so insistent Story on taking down drag. Story? I think it's going to be fine. Roman's taken another, but time on the clock really is the problem here. Roman's have found no. another headshot. Bob is on heaven. Kinky has to get this kill and does. It's down to you, jerks, but he can't connect the one bullet he needed. He would have been one bullet on both of them. How yeah. on earth have they got away with that? One bullet. Of, if he lands that first shot on Kinky, then he drops the bomb in heaven. There's no way for the last player in Rush B to actually recover the bomb at that point. Duck dive down the vent. Job done. Rush B maintain their composure, though, and they will Gosh. get the round in their favor. My goodness, that was close. In the end, that information that Story got with the Famas, seeing Taxi with the bomb, just a little head, crossing toward Ramp, actually didn't really yeah. make a huge difference in the round after, in the end, after all. But... I mean, they were so committed to trying to frag him, right? It was actually quite hilarious how that <laughs> played out. Nades missing the mark. Yeah, I mean, first nade took half of his 15 down, then he had eight left, and then the second nade didn't reach him at all. How he gets away with one is a minor miracle. But Rush B will right, be well. glad there's no major miracle. At least this time. So I've had that major miracle in the last month or so. Yeah. It's got to be a countdown or like a cooldown period or something so you can <laughs> that prize again. Okay, we've got our first Zeus of the series. They've been watching Rops on this map, playing close up with the rechargeable Zeus. Let's see yeah. if we can find one. Nine, six. I mean, you mentioned on Anubis a sort of similar storyline where... If you fall 9-3 on the half, but you win the pistol, convert that, then 9-6 is the scoreline thereafter. And the game looks a whole lot more different at that point, doesn't it? Just three rounds between the two teams. You feel like there's more momentum behind Rush B. And listen, that picture does change very quickly if Saw go on to win this next gun round. Dispels everything I'm saying right now. But Rush B are chipping away right now. If they win the next gun round, then it, I'd say it's game on at that point. Yeah, I think... In general, the beginnings of CT sides have always been a struggle in this entire game because, as you very rightly have pointed out in the last map and in this one, not a single CT pistol has been won. So there's been no good start in this series. This will be a, a fine and comfortable sixth for Rush B. Bomb will be planted toward B. 
Zeus sees nothing, sadly. Yeah, unfortunately, we're gonna get we're gonna get deprived, Trav. We're not gonna get what we wanted. Yeah, no, uh, no funny, funny words, funny voice lines, funny reactions for the Zeus. No one does it better than you, though, Trav. You like to say that, but you know. I know. I I mean it though. I'm not. I, you know what? <laughs> do you think I just butter you up to get you to do it each time? I mean, that's only partly true. Only partly. I'll take it. <laughs> to take what we can get these days. More USPs well, go down to the bomb. the bomb. But it doesn't yeah, matter. Can get a couple kills. Because they were eco anyway. It, that was our Zeus though. That was the end of the Zeus. It's oh gone no. With the wind. What an absolute Whatever nightmare. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, okay. Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Oh no. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 6-9, first full gun round of the second half. Saw looking to maintain their dominant hold here on the game. This is the deciding map, as you could see, well, as you were able to see top right. 13-10 in Saw's favor, first map. 13-11, 13-11 was the return from Rush B. First full gun round of the second half. Orp in play as well for Story. How does this one unfold? Can Story get this opening pick almost got the timing there on the little jump spot of the smoke but fortunately for rush b he'll make his way through roman on top of the a site silos usually if the flashes aren't too terrible you do see legs making your way through there oh jerks it's a bit awkward timing he spots one and falls away and he's got story support now as well quickly coming back to help spots the little jump spot but will fall away Rush B have ramp. Like I mentioned before, now I can make a decision on what they want to do. And they're certainly going to try and take B straight up. This puts Jerks under a lot of pressure. Four players coming his way. Kiro leaps in with the MAC-10 once again. It's materials to take it. But you Jerks will at least go one for one too. It keeps Saw with this man advantage. Kinky lurking near Squeaky. If he can get one kill, that would be a very oh. big one to take. But Story just checks it at the right time. And now Executo has been spotted out by Aras Dodge. Can he stay alive? It's a good double pick. They team up nicely for that one. Both going through the doors, but there's the bomb on the floor. And Mitsuri has actually almost taken an Executor as well. Bomb picked up, and I think whatever Executor does, he's in for a world of hurt here. Oh, I do like the play there from him. Just going back for a double check in towards Vent. Hope he can catch somebody rotating down. Not going to happen. At least he finds a bomb plant, though. That's extra money that, can, that they can carry through. One versus two, though. Only ten points of health next to impossible for him. Door being blown open. He's trying to isolate the fight. Silence is back right now. Roman swings wide, isolates his position. Kill comes through. And with that saw, will get themselves to double digits. So it was a good response there, right from you, Jerks. After he gets contact ramp, he doesn't hang around. He falls back. Muterus rotates around to support him. Yeah. Just really good work between the two of them there to lock it down. Yeah, and point one to take as well. We've seen a few things getting out of hand for both sides in this game when it comes to little streaky periods. But for Saw, that's a relaxer. I'm not the Swedish player. Yeah, I haven't heard that name for a long time. Brother of Freddy Frog. Yeah, indeed. I don't know. Just so suddenly made me Red think Reserve. of it. Was that the team? I think so. I mean, there are plenty of teams over the years. But yeah, that was, I think that was one of them. Throwback. But it's not Thursday yet. Story. Just misses the shot as they cross over toward outside red. Reserve. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> Either way. I heard it. Rush B I hear help you. themselves here. They have to, otherwise it's a borderline game over if they lose this round. Just thinking about their money, they only get $1,900 if they lose this round. That's not going to be enough to subsidize a full investment in the next. Yeah. All or nothing. Group A. Starting off with a, a bit of a bang. System 5 with their new composition of players. Stepping in. Win over Pera. Be a bit of a RMR hangover for, for Pera there as well. After the poor performance on LAN. 
But Saw had the opposite. That nade unfortunately will miss. But they've got quite a nice setup on A if Rush B do decide to make an execute happen here. They've got three mollies still and the smoke. Yeah, they're going to about to litter the site. Double pump on the execute coming through from Rushby as they throw their second wave of utility. Still a brief pause after the mollies rain in. They're eventually going to commit some to save off that. Only 90 seconds left on the clock. Roman caught out in the open. Arasdotia only good for the one. Oh! Now, you jokes who rotates through, he's going to be able to double up. 10 seconds left oh! remaining. Does Story try and deny the plant? He doesn't have to because Muterus emerges <laughs> out from the vent and he'll find two kills to stifle the round. Yeah, Materis. Arriving sharpishly, to say the least. That up the vent from Muturis there. That first kill was ridiculous. And then unfortunately, of course, the bomb was being planted in the open. Nice pounce there from Saw. Those are the sort of things that can go awry. For example, if Muturis just catches a headshot there, leaves it in a borderline impossible position for his teammate. But he realized the right timing was there. Now, just two away from victory for Saw. And I've got to say, you've got to sing the praises of Arasdoshe and the U-Jerks. They've been superb, but this time the pistols will overrun them. Lifeline, perhaps. It has to be Muteris, and Kinky removes him. Jerks is now last alive. One versus two. Oh, he does good damage, but takes damage himself. And they've dived the bomb down the vents. I think Jerks knows it. So at this point, yeah, it looks like an unlikely seventh coming through here for Rush B. He certainly does know it. He did see both of the players towards Vent. Whether he goes for it or not, I yet to be seen. I mean, surely not, right? You look at the money here for Saul. Rush B is still in the conversation. New Jerk's still going to be in some trouble to try and save that AWP. Kinky not going to let him. Not even thinking about the post plant was Kinky. He was just thinking about denying the gun being saved. And that is going to be a seventh round and an anti-eco for Rush B. Yeah, that's a, a big swing round for Rush B. So, of course, winning that round with Materius arrived up the vents. Only with two alive. Economy not in a good spot, and Rush B have a chance to get this game a little bit closer once again. Nice little stack in the back of Garage here. I quite like this. See many of these sort of ideas next to Connector on Overpass. That one on yeah. train back in the day too is always a good one. I love me a chili the stack, man. I'm sure you do. You would be the top of the uh, the pyramid, Trav. What? Because I'm because I'm the smallest, or no? Because you're the star. Ah, he's so cute, isn't he? <laughs> I knew that's where you were going. Well, I knew that's where you were going to go when I said that. <laughs> My intentions were pure, man. My intentions were pure. Uh, get a run. Nothing pure about the intentions of Rush B here in this round, mate, because they have just completely cleaned up Saw. Eighth round coming through. Locked in. I've been impressed by the tenacity out of Rush B. I mean, we saw them fall behind at the start of Anubis, and they came, came back and they fought through there. On Vertigo, it was looking a bit dicey, but they were able to get things back on track. And even here on Nuke, down 9-3 on the half, going to the T side. I mean, they haven't crumbled once yet throughout this entire series, and that's just been impressive for a team of, well, players that we, we, we're just not so familiar with. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much to say about, about this team when it comes to your previous results and progress elsewhere in the scene. Got a couple of decent wins in Tier 3. Some performances against some decent Tier 2 teams, but... Obviously, you can, we can have an argument all day about what class is a Tier 2 and what class is a Tier 3, but still, their, their, their results haven't been awful. And as I said, Nota, the youngster, has been putting up some good numbers against some good teams. And if the Taxi as a duo, just 16, any names to look out for in the future? Could be picked up by the likes of maybe a Spirit Academy or something like that. We know that Spirit love their youngsters. And always yeah, uh, nurture the talent well. This goes without saying. There's a certain Phenomenal spirit player on the team right now. Aren't they? <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, even Magic's right. He was on Spirit since he was what seventeen, and now it's because he feels like one of the uh, one of the old wise heads. He's the one that's nurturing the likes of Donk and Zontix. He's the one doing all the interviews, for example. So it's kind of amazing how those things turn over time. Anyway, back to the subject at hand, which is Saw trying to close this one out with another full buy story with the orc once again. Just has enough to be able to buy it up for A1S is to surround him. I mean, this is actually a really important round for both of these teams. If Saw loses 11-9 becomes 11-10, at that point Rush B are breathing down their necks and they're going to be feeling the heat and feeling the pressure. Nobody wants anybody breathing down their neck, Trav. That is a, a very uncomfortable thing to experience. Yeah. I don't know. As we said earlier, maybe you're into that. If we are, you're not. we're not going to judge. I'm certainly not. Yeah. <laughs> 55 seconds. Um, but yeah, Rushby have got some good control in towards Secret. There's a few, a few players outside. They could still actually pivot through Mini into A from here. They know they've deprived Saw of information. Yeah, this is an interesting one. Clock's been an issue a couple of times for Rush B in this game. Materia's holding a very annoying angle to clear out if you are Rush B. A nice little clear from Jerks, but Kinky's got into the cubby outside. Now that's dangerous, and you Jerks only just gets away from that. Materia's is then forced to peek, or at least he feels like he's forced to peek. And he'll get caught out by Kinky pushing aggressively. Now then, Jerks toward heaven, he gets his one, but in comes Main. What's just happened there? Kiro's hit a collateral through his teammate's head. And he's even gone and got a third, technically. Kill as well. Two versus two, nine seconds. Good hold from Executor, but now Story's dropped onto the site, and it's AWP versus AWP close range, but a big swing with the Tech 9. Kiro's showing up again, just like on the first two maps. He's keeping Rush B in this series. And I think that's what's been the most impressive that set of his game here is just how he's been able to stand up in these high pressure situations has Kiro. Not just getting kills and easy, you know, anti-eco rounds or anything like that. These clutches have been mega from Kiro, uh, Kiro so far. Really good work coming through from him. And just massive balls right after he plants the bomb which he commits to after he hears the player dropping out of heaven. Just wide swings with the Tech 9. Story backing himself to hit the Hail Mary shot there. It doesn't yeah. happen. And now Rush B are going to draw within one. That was a Hail Mary shot as well, because he dropped down toward the site and just basically stayed stock solid, almost like a rabbit in the headlights in a way. Saying, okay, I'm going to back myself to hit this flick, but Kiro just holds the strafe. And yeah, it's a huge round to win and a huge round from Kiro, considering he, the madness of killing someone through your own teammate. Doesn't matter. The enemy's there to be hit. And the round's there to be won. Don't feel bad about it. His teammate would be saying, you did the right thing. Led to the round victory. And now, just two yeah. rounds the gap. Doesn't matter what the price. As long as you win the round. That's what matters the most as we do go into the 21st. I mean, we haven't actually had a... Uh... Any blowouts in the series so far. 13, 10, the first, 13, 11, the second. Lots of contested maps throughout the series so far. Nuke has been no different. This round, however, will be a walkover. Yeah, it said the gap is two. Well, I mean, basically, with what the weaponry that Saw had, it was more likely that the gap would be just one, and that's probably what we're going to get. Saw can choose to save their Kevlar here if they want. I said that Vertigo felt like it had overtime written all over it. And Kiro said no to that. I wonder if we could be in a similar really situation again, here. Right. Surely not on the T side of Nuke, man. I mean, that would just be insane if he was able to do it again. The thing is, is it's actually Nota who's doing most of the damage. And Texi's been very good, especially in that first half. Even though they only won three rounds, where would they have been without his impact? Nota's really standing up, though, as a 16-year-old. 
putting yeah. up some really good numbers and a great performance here on the decider. As we head into another gun round, Saul were they were sitting pretty at one point, Trav. They really were. It was a 9-3 half, if I'm not mistaken. Felt comfortable. Yeah, it was 9-3. And it's definitely not comfortable anymore. Round 22 of 24. Are we going to get to 24 again? Feels likely. Story. Oh, head spotted. But that's a ridiculous shot from Kinky. The 32-year-old IGL. The veteran. He's only got, I say, like, not a great rating on HLTV. Because, of course, he mostly thrusts himself in first just to say, Okay, listen, I'll take the space for you. Let my stars do the work. He's got 15 kills in this game, and that was an insane shot. Executor is the one lagging behind this time around. He gets taken down by Roman, and Nota's trying to clear out CT spawn because oh, he knew that man. Story played there earlier. But Materius, hanging around in hell, sends Nota to hell. 4v3. Yeah, but that also means that maybe there's some space, right? Texi's realized, okay, if he's playing from hell, then maybe I can try and get through heaven. I think there is some room to navigate in towards A from where he is. But look at Aristotle. I mean, he's got the map split in half right now. That Molly. Where's that come from? That's oh! CT throwing Molly. No! They knew Aristotle was up there, maybe. Kira with the no scope will find a marvelous kill, but die soon afterwards. Texi's left in the 1v3, but don't count him out of this one, Trav. Don't count him out. Two players coming in from the same angle. That's Roman and Materius. He's managed to get himself into Hut silently, very quickly here. If he goes for a wrap, this could work, but no, he's going to stick around, and I think that might be his undoing. He's now been spotted. There's a player directly above him, and there is no chance for Texi. Saw will secure a guaranteed overtime of a couple of match points. Yeah, two match points to be precise here for Saw to finish off the job. However... It's really only one, right? Because if they lose this round here, they don't have anything to work with going into the round afterwards. Pots and pans to try and finish off the job. This is the moment for Rush B. It is. Roman has some leftover cash, but he's really the only one with that. 2,900 loss on Saw, so I think they probably would be able to afford something on Aradoshe and oh, Story. True. And Story's actually yeah, going yeah. super aggressive this time. I really like this. And oh, poor old Kiro no. holding long range. Just setting up the utility gets taken out. But a rush of blood there perhaps for Story. Goes for an immediate reface and gets punished for it. No to taking that headshot can't, nicely. Can't make that mistake at the Major. And that's what I was talking about coming into this game. They need to make sure that they don't let their discipline slip. Found a great opening kill there. Was able to pull his knife out and fall back. Right, He had somebody covering him from silo. So... Could have locked in his profits, decided to hang around for more, and he got burnt. Yeah, that's a bit naughty from Story. I think they'll watch back in the demo later and say, okay, you can't really be doing that again. Materia's trying to play a bit of a one-way on top of that smoke. And unfortunately for Roman, he goes looking as well. Kinky moves him. Another important entry from Kinky outside. But again, Materia's answers back. He's been very impactful in that position toward hell. Getting quick trade kills. And of course, with Saw having the complete control of Lobby, that's basically ruled out late round plays for Rush B. Those will be made on the run back toward Ramp. And actually, that does open up Lobby a little bit further because they are shifting back wow. for it. 30 seconds. It's basically all on Mr. Sweet Rice here. Oh my goodness, it's going to be really tough. Rushby are going to start to run out of time. They don't have the luxury of shift walking the entire way through right now. Aris Dodge starts to realize what's oh. going on. Very tight angle being held, but oh my goodness. Texi rips his head off. Muterus not even going to be able to get a single kill there. 97 points of damage done, but that's not enough for a frag. And despite how little time Rushby had to work with, they actually make the, work, make the round work really well. Incredible. Incredible. Of course, you, you don't really expect Materius to even get away with one when he was on such low health, getting mollied out from the CT vent. Jux will definitely have a kill in the back here against Texi. Oh, I say that. I say that. That is unfortunate. Shoots way too early. Didn't control it. 
Can just shift a couple of steps further forward to guarantee that kill. And that's a very important AK that will go amiss from round 24. Okay, well, we are descending into potentially unrecognized territory because we've had a, a what a 13-10 and a 13-11 could be overtime for the first time here in the series. Do rush be have it in them? One more round in regulation is all they need. They fought so hard, Trav. They came into the T side down 3-9 for God's sake. And here they are just one round away. You think Story's regretting that re-peak after the opening frag in the previous? I think he might be. I would be. Just a touch. If he hit the flick, would be saying how wonderful it was. Maybe he's still saying it was a bit overzealous, but we'd still be saying how wonderful it was. In this instance, coming down and not falling back could be Swords undoing. Here we go. First duel to be coming in. Materius has changed up his position. This time he's in garage. Nota could spot him, though. It's not a good angle for Materius. It's a right eye peek with the smoke, pretty much, if you get what I mean. And it makes it a five versus three. How on earth do Saw find this again? At least it's an easy kill for jerks. Kinky just spraying and praying. But they've got secret control with the bomb. 45 seconds. They have all the advantages here. Look where the CTs are positioned. They're nowhere near yet. Yeah. Doesn't seem to have any inclination to the fact that Rush B are going to head in towards the B bomb site from here. Assuming that's going to be the case, they could go back up the stairs, you know. And it looks like that's going to be the case. I just hope they aren't overthinking this for their own sake right now. Roman creeping his way through. Okay, that's a huge oh. drag, and job is done. Rush B are going to force overtime here on Nuke, despite the fact they were down 9 3 at the half. What a remarkable comeback. Oh, baby. Story 1v4. Now he's supposed to get a headshot. But we're not there yet. <laughs> He'll obviously give this a go. I'm actually not really considering Mini just yet. All vision toward Hut and squeaking in heaven. As soon as Story takes any shot, he'll... Uh, most certainly be traded, but he's not even allowed to do that. It's no to, to remove him. We go to overtime on map three, all the rounds. And the 16-year-old with 21 kills, doing a lot of work for his team. Okay, well, I mean, this is just going to be frustrating at this point for Saw. You could imagine that they were probably thinking about what was for dinner once they were going to finish this match at 9-3 going into their CT side. And those thoughts have to be put on ice. Yeah. If you want no. an for story, by the way. Yeah, so maybe something different. Maybe some lobby crunch action, perhaps. Maybe he's just not feeling the orb today. Maybe something, something weird like that. It's unlike him. Maybe they want to make absolutely sure of money in the final few rounds of this overtime. Ready? It's a good start. Executor removed. Well, this is the law of overtime, right? The team who was able to close it out in regulation normally wins the first round of OT. However, Kinky, how have he, has he just teleported into secret? <laughs> I think that's what Muterus is asking. Because how in God's name did he get there so quickly? How many opening kills has Kinky got outside? It's really been like a, a battle of the old guard, Kinky versus Muterus, in that position often. Um, that's true. I mean, Kinky's, what, 19 kills now? Yeah, that's this crazy. is insane. Really is an impressive performance. Age means but a thing these days, it feels like, in CS. It's never too late. We've seen that, of course, with Saw themselves. Look where Aras Doce is. He can't afford to drop down because, of course, that will make noise. Bomb spotted. That's huge. And he will probably feel quite safe on top of T-Roof now as well. T yeah, versus 2, 35 there. seconds. All good. Really rough here for Rush B to try and recover just because of where that bomb has been dropped. Kiro's first objective is to try and deal with the player on top of the roof, and he will. It's quite awkward right now. What? Oh my god, no. Not like this, Kiro. What? He's got the scope out still. He's got a no scope him. What? There's no way that's what? how he ends up finding the frag. He'll die straight afterwards, but style points are plenty. I mean, Kinky's giving this a go. He's looking for the kills, of course, and that's, I mean, still a little bit dangerous for Saw. Somehow, Jerks reacts while already low HP. Hop back around the angle and double headshot him. Well, 
Usually when we get to overtime, lots of games do tend to descend into a bit of madness. That certainly was a bit of madness. And a quick pause to maybe have a, a breather. I don't believe this is a, a tactical. I believe this is a quick technical. I like the graphic there, overtime number one, first to 16, a lot of, uh, well, more casual viewers might not know exactly where the finish line is in these sorts of situations. Yeah, MR12, we've had it for a little while now, but we are yeah. basically back to CSGO at this point, at least with the scoring system. If you want to... Yeah, if you want to catch some more Counter-Strike, by the way, just so you know. Um, right now, the main ESL broadcast, just remove the B from the ESL CS link, is covering the IM Dallas North American Closed Qualifiers. And that's where Liquid are going up against Boss. Liquid trying to save their skin, coming through the lower bracket after losing two nouns last night. If they win against Boss. They have a rematch versus Nouns in the Grand Final at what would be 2.30am UK time. I probably won't be awake for that. I will not be there. Yeah. But, for you yeah. Night Owls and you North American CS Enjoyers, that is another option for you later tonight. Looking forward to seeing that Liquid team continue to develop. Started poorly. I mean, there was a lot of hype around them. Yeah, I agree. A lot of hype around them coming into uh, into action, but it hasn't been great. Have to qualify for the uh, the major, obviously. I mean, that's just a no-brainer. Yeah, if they don't. Five spots up for grabs from that America's RMR. Yeah, if they don't, it would be a absolute travesty, to be honest, for Liquid. And it hasn't really looked that clean to begin. Of course, NRG are quite lucky they got their... Uh, Late foot in the door. True. True, of and course. And it's the RMR at the expense of... Uh, was it wasn't Wildcard, was it? No, I can't remember. Anyway. There we go. It was against Back him. The game. It was Amiya's team. Who, uh... Amiya was called oh, Roman, a naughty boy. Squeaky. Well, he's actually been able to get himself an early kill here. And I guess he's kind of using the fact that we had a prolonged pause there. He's trying to catch somebody off guard. But Kiro, he catches Story in midair. And that will bring it back into an even numbers game. Yeah, that's a really nice kill from Roman. One of the very few occasions we've seen a door push come through and it works out for him. Viteris once again fighting for his life and that is just, that really, as soon as he shot a few bullets there and didn't back away straight away, I was like, okay, this, he's just dead here. Obviously, he wasn't to know that. You have to understand some timings, I feel like, and maybe realise that that's a bit dangerous. Obviously, we've got the x-ray. He doesn't. But that was... Seemingly sticking around for way too long. We're not in the team speak. We don't know what was called. Yeah. But we have to call it as we see it. Aras Doshe has at least managed to retake the position that Muterius has played pretty often. So uh, the question is, do they expect him here too? He's actually going to make his way up toward heaven just in time. Oh, the oh, timing. No. Ooh, I say just in time. He does flick back just in time. Removes King Key. 3v3. 30 seconds though. Yeah, slight mistiming on the push there from Rush B because they push into heaven two seconds after the molly has faded. That means that Aristotle is able to reposition himself, continues to do work. Two versus two. Texi, the one who is able to force overtime, stands tall here to try and get a point on the board for his team. Kiro snaps across the screen to finish off you jerks. That's the score line leveled up once again as we continue here. I mean, both these teams fighting tooth and nail to open up their campaign in ECL with a win. No one's letting go. 13 apiece. Unlucky for some. Thirteen apiece. With the number thirteen unlucky. Does that cancel each other out, do you think? I don't know. Is that the is that like the one with the hotels that just don't have a thirteenth floor sometimes? Is that seven? I don't know. I think that there's for example, like you're gonna love this because you this is just so me, right? But I'm pretty sure yeah. nobody picks car number thirteen in Formula One because of just superstition. Okay. 
I think the last one to have it, if I'm not mistaken, was Pasta Maldonado. And for those knowers who know, you, you, yeah, you know. First pick. No. <laughs> first pick for story. <laughs> Google's search of that name just spiked by like five people. <laughs> <laughs> Story with a good opening pick with the orb. Need to see more of that. He's been quite quiet. In yeah, for sure. This... Throughout the whole series, yeah, though, man. kind of this series, to be honest. Notable flashes way in toward ramp. Jerks has that tight angle, looking for one. And oh my goodness, that flash was awful for Arasnoche, but he actually managed to get away with it and takes one with him. But of course, they have to expect another player here too. Jerks could be in trouble. He gets taken down for free. Thankfully, Maturis is still behind that Molotov, so retains the man advantage. But so many of these situations for Saw, but they could have a two-man advantage. It becomes only the one, and it keeps it nervy. Rush B still have a chance here. 18 seconds. They have to go into story. Head spotted. Glass broken. And with the smoke down on the site, I think Texi's going to try and commit to the plot. This is very bold from Story, but he charges in with that sidearm. He takes no, his no, kill. No. Materius Ooh. takes that trade. Again, it's a bit scary, but Saw get a 2-1 on overtime. Yeah, thankfully, means they're going to carry a lead here into their T side. Remember, in regulation, they were leading 9-3 on their T side going into their CT half. Here, they were able to win, what, two-thirds of their rounds on their CT side. Struggled a lot more in regulation than they did in overtime. Can they finish off the job here? That's the question. Chaos, Trav. Absolutely chaos. Just how we love it. T side. We know, of course, in regulation. It's been quite a while since Saw on T side, but when they were, they won the half 9 3. Can they remember? What they felt worked best. Speed is what they're trying. And that's not going to work out straight away. At least Aradoshe will manage to trade it quickly. But he should go down to Executor. Oh, I say should. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. He catches him over the top of the smoke. And now Kinky can only swing for one. It's fallen apart despite the opening kill. It's that combo I mentioned, man. Aris Dacia and Ujerks just working in tandem, looking really good. Kiro left remaining. He could go for a ninja here. I suppose that's the only way he could hope to make something happen. But no, Ujerks will finish it off. All five kills between himself and his rifling teammate. And that's going to be another two match points now for Saw. They had two in regulation. They couldn't finish off both on the CT side on that occasion. Now on the T side, Trav. Indeed. More chances. More chances for the expected team to actually come through and win this. But it's been a battle. It's weird, isn't it? The game has been so ridiculously close. Yeah, I don't feel like there's been ever one moment, except maybe first map when Rushby were up 9-7 on the favoured T side on Anubis. I don't feel like there's been any moment where it feels like Rush B were the favourites. Or in control, despite it being so close. Yeah, you're right. But I guess that's a reflection of how well they've just always done to at least keep themselves in the conversation, right? They've always been sort of at arm's length of Saw and never any further. Either way, three versus three, even numbers game here in the first round of OT in the second half. Oh, few jokes bypass. Oh my, oh, so my desperately goodness. trying to force the frag. Aristotle will trade. There's more where that came from, though. Nota's out of bullets and actually smartly doesn't reface that. But look where Roman is. If Nota opens this door, he could be in for a rude awakening. Thankfully, he's got executor support. I think they're going to open it together. Knock, knock. Roman takes one, but there's no way you expect executor as well. Now, executor's had a pretty awful game. Now will be the time to step up. Unfortunately, oh he can't go through that Molotov. And I say he can't go through it. He's tagged himself down to 40 from all that. He's got a kit. He's got an incendiary. But Arrows oh, is playing the smart angle. This is so yeah. difficult to pre-fire. But if he checks it correctly, I think he'd have the right eye peak. Arrows Doche leg spotted, but headshot taken. And Saw in very, very tough fashion, it has to be said. Fair play to Rush B will kick off their season 47 of Challenger League successfully. 
Man, I, I mean, I know I for a fact didn't expect it to be that difficult for Saw. I'm sure they didn't expect it to be that challenging either. The clues in the name, the Challenger League, but my goodness, was that a hard fought victory for Saw. 2 1, overtimes included, maps 1 and regulation pretty much.